O holy, holy, holy Lord, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts bring glory and honor to you. Amen. Amen. So I decided today, instead of lecturing you with a sermon, <laughs> that um, I would do a, a Lectio a Divina with you. And you might say, well, what is a Lectio Divina? Well, the early monks did a Lectio Divina as a way to get closer to God. And I've been using it a lot these past few months to help me get closer to God. And it's a way of meditating on God's word. It's a way of increasing our understanding of God's word. It's a way of applying God's word to our life and what concerns we might have today, this morning. It's a way of blessing our souls. It's a way of healing. So I'm going to read again the same gospel that I just read, but this time I'm going to ask you to put yourself into the story. So you are there with Jesus. You're reclining at table in Simon's house some 2,000 years ago. So what I'd like you to all do is um, close your eyes. We're going to do a little meditation as I read this to you. And... Um, it's best if you um, are sitting straight um, and if your feet or your legs are not crossed. So you can just really, really um, kind of in your meditation, just really totally relax. And I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit to minister to us this morning. And whatever you are here for, whatever struggles that you have, whatever that maybe he will speak to you through this gospel reading. So I'm gonna start it again. And then I'm going to ask you to just um, think about it for, for a few minutes. So we're going to begin by just closing our eyes and just taking a few nice deep breaths. And I love the songs that we sang today about um, your breath being in our lungs. So just as you're breathing, picture yourself breathing in God's love, just breathing deep deep breathing in God's love and hold his love for a moment and then slowly and slowly breathe out anything that is hurting you today just breathe it away we're going to do this three or four times just breathing in God's love and then exhaling just breathing it out and another time, nice deep breath, breathing in God's love, focusing on his love for you. And then breathing away any pain that you carried in today, just exhaling it. And I like to picture um, as we're breathing in these nice deep breaths, I like to picture God's love coming in through our, our nostrils and filling up our, our lungs with his light and his love. And then you're just breathing out any darkness that you had, that you brought with you. Any fears, concerns, breathe it out. And so another nice deep breath, breathing in God's love. And now his light and his love are filling up your lungs and filling up your abdomen. And that's good, very, very good. So once more, just a nice deep breath, breathing in God's love so that his love is now filling the whole body down to the tips of your toes, to the top of your head, just breathing in his light and his love and driving away the darkness. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And they who follow me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So as you're breathing in his love and his light, I'd like you to picture yourself going back 2,000 years and picture yourself wearing a different outfit than you'll be wearing today. But Simon has invited you. He said, there's a preacher here. And Simon's invited you to sit at table 
with a group of people. And so um, you sit down and you see this, this man walk in um, and sit down at the table also. And there's something very special about this man. You feel it in your very soul as he sits down and smiles at you. And now be in this story with Jesus. So while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon Leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves in dignity, <clears throat> why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body before, beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. And so I'd like you to think as you're sitting there at table and you heard all these words from Jesus, what are your thoughts and feelings? What's going on in your head as you watch this woman break the jar and anoint Jesus? How do you feel when the disciples criticize her? What do you say about her? And then I'd like you to think of a time when you judge someone else for the way they served or worshiped Jesus. What justification do you use for your judgment? What might God say to you about this? And then if you can, imagine that you are the woman anointing Jesus. What motivates you to pour out your perfume on him? Do you have any hesitation in breaking the jar? And so if you are this woman now, how do you feel when you hear the disciples criticizing you and scolding you? And then how do you feel when you hear Jesus defend you and defend your offering of your gift to him? And as he looks at you and defends you, how do you respond when he declares that you have done a beautiful thing. And then finally, Jesus says, are there any other longings, fears, resistance to God that you want to Share with me now, and he looks you right in the face. Just you and him now. The crowd has faded away. And he said, 
What beautiful thing are you being invited to offer in sacrifice and love to me? What beautiful thing do you want to offer to me? And he says, come to me with your longings and your fears and your prayers. Come to me, for I am the good shepherd, and I take care of my flock. And I love you, because you are one of my flock. You are a precious lamb. He says, give your burden to me, because I want your burden to be light. I am God. I can take this burden from you. I can heal you of this. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And minister to us as we sit in your presence. When you're ready, you can come back, open up your eyes, but sit still for a moment. I have to give credit to uh, this uh, sermon that I gave, that it came from a wonderful series of books called Sensible Shoes by Sharon uh, Garlow Brown. And this was an exercise that the spiritual director did for these women. And uh, it blessed me, and I hope it blessed you.